Hi everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel Ask Prep. In today's video, we are going to discuss about some natural phenomena. Let's get started. What is lightning? Lightning is the visible discharge of electricity that occurs when a region of a cloud acquires an excess electrical charge either positive or negative that is sufficient to break down the resistance of air. How lightning occur? Lightning happens because of the separation of electrical charges during a thunderstorm. As a storm develops, air moves up while water droplets move down, causing the top of the cloud to become positively charged and the bottom to become negatively charged. The ground also gathers positive charges. When the charges get strong enough, the air can't stop them from connecting. When positive and negative charges meet, they create a bright flash of light and a loud sound, which we see as lightning. This can happen between clouds or between clouds and the ground. Although we understand the basic idea of lightning now, it's still dangerous and can cause damage. So, it's important to take steps to protect ourselves from lightning strikes. What are electric charges? We know that every atom comprises of subatomic particles such as electrons, protons and neutrons. All these particles share a common property that they carry electric charges. Electrons have a negative charge on them while protons have a positive charge. We know that atoms carry a balanced charge however these charges may sometimes become out of order. An object will be called electrically neutral if it is carrying a balanced proportion of positive and negative charges. An object is called a charged object if there is an imbalance of electrons and protons in it. Charging by rubbing When we rub two objects with each other they get charged due to a transfer of electrons between them. For example, if we rub a rubber balloon with animal fur, the balloon is made up of rubber attracts the electrons from the animal fur. This results in rubber having an excess of electrons while fur having a shortage of electrons. In the same way, if we rub a plastic comb with dry hair the comb acquires some charge. Types of charges and their interaction We know that charged objects may have a shortage or excess of electrons. Objects having an excess of electrons are called negatively charged while an object having a shortage of electrons are called positively charged. For instance, when a glass rod is rubbed with silk cloth it becomes positively charged while the silk cloth becomes negatively charged. These charged objects are now capable of attracting other charged and uncharged objects. Objects having the same kind of charges repel each other while objects with different kind of charges attract each other. What is an electrostatic force? The force of attraction or repulsion experienced by charged objects is called electrostatic force. What is a static electric charge? Static charge or static electricity is an electric charge which does not move. Static charges are a result when two objects are rubbed with each other. When two surfaces come in contact with each other repeatedly it results in the transfer of electrons from one material to another. The strength of an electric charge depends upon different factors such as 1. The temperature and humidity 2. Properties of the surface such as its material In opposite to static charge, there is an electric current. The electric current results when the charges flow or move from one point to another. This electric current results in glowing of bulb or working of all the electrical appliances. Transfer of charges Charges can transfer from one object to another with the help of conduction and induction. Conduction When a charged object comes in contact with a conductor it results in the transfer of charges through the conductor. Induction When a charged object is brought near a neutral object, it results in shifting in the position of the electrons in the other object. The process of induction does not involve any physical contact between the charged and uncharged object while the process of conduction requires a physical contact between them. What is an electroscope? It is a device which can test if an object is charged or not. 
Abraham Bennett developed a gold leaf electroscope in 1787. Structure of an electroscope Generally, gold and silver are used to construct an electroscope because they are good conductors of electricity. Otherwise, copper and aluminium can also be used. It consists of a glass jar having a vertical brass rod. The rod is inserted into the jar through the cork. The brass rod has a brass disc or horizontal rod attached to it. From the other end, two leaves of gold are suspended. Working of an electroscope When a charged object touches the brass disc, electric charges get transferred from the brass rod to the gold leaves. As a result, the gold leaves move away from each other depicting the presence of charges. Discharging and Earthing when a charged object loses its charges, it is said to be discharged. When a charged object transfers its charges to the earth it is called earthing. Generally, every building is provided with earthing to protect it from electrical shocks due to leakage of electric current. Lightning Safety Just like with earthquakes, there are safety measures we can take to protect ourselves from lightning. During a thunderstorm, Follow these safety tips. 1. Stay indoors and avoid using electrical appliances. 2. Stay away from windows, doors, and anything that conducts electricity like metal pipes and corded phones. 3. Avoid taking a shower or bath as water conducts electricity. Safety outdoors. If you're caught outside during a thunderstorm. 1. Avoid open fields, hilltops and tall objects like trees or poles. 2. If you're in an open area, crouch down with your feet together and head low. 3. Stay away from water bodies like lakes and swimming pools. Using Lightning Conductors Lightning conductors, also known as lightning rods, are metal rods placed on buildings to protect them from lightning. They provide a path for the electrical discharge to travel safely to the ground, preventing damage to the structure. Earthquakes Now, let's move on to earthquakes. These sudden movements of the Earth's crust can be incredibly destructive. What are earthquakes? An earthquake is the shaking of the surface of the Earth resulting from a sudden release of energy in the Earth's crust. This energy creates seismic waves that cause the ground to shake. How earthquakes occur? The Earth's crust is divided into several pieces called tectonic plates. These plates are constantly moving, but sometimes they get stuck at their edges due to friction. When the stress on the edge overcomes the friction, there is an earthquake that releases energy in the form of seismic waves. The point inside the Earth where the earthquake starts is called the focus, and the point directly above it on the surface is the epicenter. Earthquakes can cause buildings to collapse, roads to crack, and lead to loss of life and property. Protection from Earthquakes Although we cannot prevent earthquakes, we can take measures to protect ourselves from their devastating effects. Constructing Earthquake-Resistant Buildings One of the most effective ways to protect against earthquakes is by constructing buildings that can withstand seismic forces. This includes using flexible materials, shock absorbers, and cross-bracing to reinforce structures. Safety Measures During an Earthquake During an earthquake, it's crucial to follow safety measures. One drop, cover, and hold on get under a sturdy table and hold on until the shaking stops. Two, stay away from windows and heavy objects that might fall. Three, if you're outside, Move to an open area away from buildings, trees, and utility wires. Earthquake Preparedness Being prepared for an earthquake can save lives. Keep an emergency kit with essentials like water, food, flashlight, and a first aid kit. Make a family emergency plan and ensure everyone knows what to do during an earthquake. Conclusion To summarize, natural phenomena like lightning, Earthquakes, thunderstorms, and cyclones are powerful and sometimes dangerous. Understanding how they occur and knowing the safety measures can help us protect ourselves and minimize damage. 
Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed learning about some natural phenomena. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more exciting science videos. See you next time.